Hi. This morning I thought I'd do a little video on a condition called aortic stenosis. Um, aortic stenosis is a common um, heart valve problem uh, which is serious and can be life-threatening. Um, a little bit about the aortic valve to start off with. Um, uh, the aortic valve is a valve um, which consists of three leaflets and basically the valve has been provided to us by God to try and stop blood from flowing back into the heart when the blood is pumped out. So you can imagine that the natural tendency for blood would be to fall back because of gravity when the heart is pumping blood out. So the heart pumps blood, the blood comes out and then gravity as that heart opens up, relaxes, the blood would go back in. So God has given us a valve called the aortic valve which has these three leaflets which essentially open like this to allow the blood out and then close and stop the blood from coming back in. Um, now the problem is with this valve because it is the gatekeeper to all the blood it can undergo wear and tear and with time it can uh, thicken and narrow because of deposition of crud on it and, um, and eventually it can get so tight that it can severely restrict blood flow coming out of the heart. Uh, there are a few people, um, and I suppose 1% of the population, uh, have something called a bicuspid aortic valve, which is a valve which has only two leaflets, and that is a lot more prone to getting narrowed at a younger age. So in people who are younger, one of the most likely causes for them to develop a thickening of their aortic valve is uh, a bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, that occurs in 1% of the population and that uh, will cause uh, a narrowing of the heart valve such that it may require an operation at a relatively young age, so in 40s, 30s, 40s. Um, in more, more often than not, however, it, it is because of um, age-related degeneration and deposition of calcium which causes this valve to and narrow to the point that in its severest form it barely opens um, just about allowing enough blood to get through uh, but um, but uh, if it gets any worse then it can certainly cause people um, to drop down dead. What are the symptoms of uh, aortic stenosis? Well you may not have any symptoms for several years because um, even though the valve is restricted in its opening, it is still opening enough to let blood through so you don't think that there's anything wrong. But uh, as time progresses and the valve gets thicker and thicker, the first symptom most people often complain of is breathlessness and exercise intolerance. So they will say that hey, um, I used to be able to walk um, a mile in the morning and now after about 500 um, uh, meters I start getting breathless. Um, and so I'm not able to do as much as I used to. Uh, alternatively, uh, some people may turn around and say, well, I get chest discomfort when I exert myself, and that's again because the, because the valve is so tight that the blood can't get out to be able to supply the heart itself, and that would cause chest discomfort. And sometimes people complain of feeling dizzy because, again, the blood, is, uh, the blood simply can't get, you simply don't get enough blood going to the brain, uh, and that can cause dizziness or blackouts. And um, there is no doubt that if you start developing symptoms, then that suggests that the aortic stenosis is very severe and needs to be corrected. Otherwise, it would undoubtedly lead um, to uh, worsening symptoms and ultimately death. So if you get any of these symptoms, it's really important to get checked out by a cardiologist. Um, most of the evidence we have tells us that really the only time to do something about aortic stenosis is um, firstly when um, the patient starts developing symptoms um, but also if there's any evidence that the left ventricle, the, chain, the pump that is pumping blood against this valve is showing signs of tiring because of all the extra work it's doing. Uh, and so I think you need to see a cardiologist. The cardiologist will undoubtedly do a heart scan and echocardiogram, shine some sound waves on the valve and be able to tell whether the valve is uh, significantly narrowed or not. Um, and uh, that will, the scan will also tell you about the state of the ventricle, the pump, uh, to see whether the pump is in essence strong or is showing any signs of weakening. Um, 
the treatment, but this is a mechanical problem, so the solution has to be a mechanical solution. Tablets don't do anything for this, so it needs an operation. Usually in the old days, the, the only option was to have open heart surgery, um, where they take, they cut the chest open, take the valve uh, and replace the valve with an artificial valve, either a, a metallic valve or a pig's valve. Uh, more recently, there has been the development of a new technique whereby you can do it via keyhole, so that doesn't need the opening of the chest. Um, uh, but it is still um, yet to be. Uh, you, it's still early days, so we don't have as much experience with this keyhole technique which is called a TAVI, but a lot of centers have started doing them and are doing them, uh, are doing larger numbers every year. But the risks are pretty well much the same. Uh, there is the inconvenience of having an open heart operation, which I guess would put most people off, but the risks of um, uh, a TAVI, this keyhole method, are the same in terms of um, uh, risks of death, stroke, um, uh, from from the procedure itself. So still the recommendation would be that if you're young and you're otherwise okay, you should have open heart surgery because that is the safest and the tried and tested method. Uh, if for any reason you can't have that, uh, say you have bad lungs and therefore uh, you wouldn't be safe to go on a uh, uh, under anesth under general anesthetic, then you could be considered for a keyhole procedure. Um, and the initial data uh, from the keyhole procedures are very good. There are lots of centers in London which do them. There's Leeds, uh, which is my local um, a referral point. And I've sent a lot of people for this procedure, and uh, most of them co have come out uh, and felt very well as a consequence. Um, so, yeah, so that's about it for aortic stenosis. Uh, I do think it's really, really important uh, to get checked out by a proper cardiologist. Uh, and if you um, need to know more about this or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me on um, my website uh, or also the number below. Um, thank you for listening, and um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.